What's up investors, today as you can see it's a pretty different episode to say the least and the reason for this it is because I do have a major announcement. I became a dad. So guys, if you forgive me, today's episode will be pretty short. For obvious reasons, I have not slept much in the last four days. It was a five, like, like in the last four or five days. So let's just go and talk about everything that just happened in this Russian-Ukraine conflict. Let's talk about straight to the point. And to be specific, we're going to be talking about attacks against uh, Transnistria. The question is, who did it or who did not? Then we're gonna talk about the tables turned and Russians, the army, decided to attack their own positions in Krynki. And also just several other frontline updates from the east and the south of Ukraine. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. Once again, so yeah, today I do not have my yellow hoodie, but yeah, I mean, I do have my Adidas tracksuit, my leather jacket, so I guess like just the typical Slav outfit. This does not matter. Let's go straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Okay, so today we have these bird houses built in one of Russian cities. So one of them looks just uh, okay. It is just built in the colored in the colors of the Russian flag. But another one looks like a air defense bird house, which is like uh, most likely it should have a sign: NATO birds are not allowed. Or even worse, American or Ukrainian birds, like definitely eagles, bald eagles, should never go inside these uh, bird houses because then they will be air defended. They will be intercepted. <laughs> She's the greatest country in the world. It's the Z army is the strongest army in Ukraine, the second one. But okay, okay, so before I go into this uh, way more, let's focus. Let's talk uh, update from the east of Ukraine to begin with. So first, uh, in Solidar, Ukrainians were able to use GLSDB guided munition and they were able to attack Russian positions in Solidar. If you remember from approximately a couple of years ago, this was one of the biggest cities where Russians tried to capture it. Unfortunately, they did and well, since then they were not able to advance any further. Next we have a video from Ivanovsky in Donetsk region and Ukrainians are using one of their remote controlled land drones to destroy one of the crucial bridges. Ivanovsky is located to the west of Bakhmut. This is one of the next cities that Russians want to capture. So destroying one of the bridges, one of the biggest ones, it will create a pretty big problem for Russians to say the least. Our next video is allegedly also from the Eastern Frontline, where one of the most modern combat battle tanks of Russians, T-90M Prorif, was destroyed. And it was having uh, this ultra-modern, extraordinary cage barbecue protection, which, as you can see, unfortunately for Russians, did not help. And then the elite Ukrainian battalion Azov presented us this video, where they destroyed yet another heavy flamethrower called Sonsepiok. And then the territory of Russia itself also had some pretty loud noises over the last several days. For example, this first picture comes to us from Nizhny Kamsk, where one of another Russian oil refinery is, is on fire, to say the least. And then in Kursk region, as always, some local residents were able to report some pretty loud noises coming last night. And ultimately, since both countries were exchanging with a lot of attacks in the last several days, one of drones at this point not a single country took the responsibility, but most likely a Russian drone. It uh, landed on the territory of Transnistria, which is supposedly a friend of Putin. And so once again, even Russians did not take responsibility, Ukrainians didn't take either. I mean, uh, Transnistria is located to the west of Ukraine. There is simply does not make sense for Ukrainians to launch their drone where there's no Russians. So like with the 99% probability it is a Russian drone. So to say the least, Putin decided to attack his friend for occasionally for making some provocation or something. Well, it did not work for him. And so yes, now let's briefly, very, very briefly talk about the situation in the southern front lines before talking about Russians attacking their positions in Krynki. But guys, first of all, for a new dad, if you don't mind, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel? This is, that's pretty much it. That's gonna be my best present for not sleeping for so long. I love you all. Thank you so much for wishes, for congratulations. I will read them. And now, yes, guys, thanks so much. Follow me on Instagram for some pictures. And now let's continue. 
And our first stop brings us to Novo Prokopivka, where recently one of three pretty big Russian convoys tried to advance to Ukrainian positions. It was fully successfully repelled by Ukrainians, and at this point this is pretty much a cemetery of the Russian military vehicles. Then in Priyutny, located in Zaporozhye frontline, Ukrainians used another AFPV drone to successfully destroy or deconstruct Russian MTLB armored vehicle. In Zavitny Bajana, Ukrainians reportedly using artillery was able to destroy another relatively big advancing assault group of Russians. And without a doubt, the most significant event of the last several days is Russians literally taking tables and turning them for some reason and attacking their own positions in Krynki. Because right here is a post of one of the relatives who is looking for, for his brother who was serving in Krynki. And he basically said that uh, right now he cannot establish the connection, he cannot call him, he's not replying to his text messages on calls. And the very last uh, message, let's call it like this, he received from him, is that, that he said that his own officers for some reason ordered uh, an artillery attack on their own positions. So it's like Russians said like, uh, hey, uh, we see some soldiers. We are not sure if it's Ukrainians or not, but these are soldiers. So just to make sure, let's uh, just launch something, let's put them to sleep and see what happens. I mean, uh, it's not like somebody, anyone is gonna be caring, right? And that's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> that's as much time as I had today. I gotta run back, help take care of my daughter, help my wife. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to continue seeing these videos. Please check my Patreon. This is where you can see uncensored episodes of The Russians. You'd get early access to everything. Uncensored footage, so many benefits. And this is the best way to support the channel, especially through times like this, the best times ever, without a doubt. Go ahead and also check the Russian Dude merch, all the links you can find down below. Thanks so much once again for watching and see you hopefully on Tuesday.